Monksville Reservoir. In here is a pocket for your kayak paddle. Well, that's it, that just goes together so quickly, so easily. You need a boat that'll get you out on the water quick and easy. A boat that goes together in less than five minutes, comes apart in even less time, very seaworthy, well finished. <laughs> comes from the people who invented the origami kayak. Here it is, the Oru Inlet. If your goal is to get out on the water without a lot of fuss, this is one of a couple of solutions that I think is really good. Hello from Pennsylvania. I'm out in game lands out here, uh, pandemic camping. I'm uh, completely alone. I'm in an area which is dispersed camping. It's uh, free to camp here. You just get a permit and uh, and you can stay. I'm here for a week, seven days. And uh, I brought my toys. I brought my bicycle. I brought this kayak too. This is a uh, Uru origami folding kayak. It's uh, the inlet. I'm going to head straight ahead for those trees and you can get an idea of how this tracks. So feet up on the uh, up on the rests. Oh yeah, and it tracks quite well. Now well, the boat is very maneuverable, and it does drift a little bit from side to side as you're paddling. But boy, it's not a problem to go straight at all. Not at all. This boat is not my favorite boat. I like the coast the best. But I bet you, in a year, I'll make another video, and I'll have used this boat at a ratio of 20 to one over the coast, just because it's so easy to transport. Bugs did a number on me all in one night. They got me. I don't know if you can see the water line down here. You can see how far the boat's sinking in the water. I got a couple of swans here. A couple of mute swans. Mute swans are an invasive species. You know, we tolerate them. They don't cause a lot of trouble. Uh, trumpeter swan is the native swan to the US. Anyway, this is really convenient. This place is close to my home. It's like 20 minutes away and uh, I'm hitting lots of logs and the boat is just really stable. I mean, it just doesn't rock at all. It, uh, there's no danger of going over, which is really nice for a beginner boat. Uh, you know, an advanced boat, you want that tippiness if you're going into rough water. But uh, that's not what this boat's all about. This boat's about having fun out in the, uh, having fun like I'm doing. It's a perfect pandemic companion, this boat. Nobody here. It's quiet. No risk. Everything's fine. You know, kayak sales are uh, soaring in this pandemic. And uh, on the kayak forums, they talked about a shortage of plastic to make kayaks with. And what they said, now I have no way of proving this, they, what they said was, Makers of plastic switched over to make plexiglass uh, because plexiglass is so much in demand with the pandemic for all those cash registers and cubicle sections and stuff. Oh boy, I'm in the slime here. Isn't this stuff good for you, like spirulina? Anyway, so they, uh, they switched over to making plexiglass because they're selling a lot more of that than, uh, than they could sell kayaks. 
but kayaks and I did have some privy into kayak sales are just selling like hotcakes uh, bicycles kayaks and other solo activity equipment is just selling like crazy RVs my RV is worth more now than when I bought it <laughs> it's great I'm gonna get past this slime then I'm gonna drift because that's what I like to do I like to just hang out out here and drift we're covering some good ground here some good water I could say this the boats not slow I've been in some pretty slow boats and uh, this boat is not slow it moves okay with every paddle it's very lightweight very responsive you get that hard shell feel with an Oru kayak that you don't get with uh, with skin and frame and uh, inflatables yeah, they have a different feel each boat has its own feel and each style of boat has its own feel now hard shell is the standard okay you know that's all there is to it so what Oru has done which I really respect and let's not forget they invented the origami kayak I'm sure they're imitated I don't know that they're equal though but what they did was the, they're the first maker to provide hard shell performance the skin doesn't give like it does on a skin and frame boat you don't need spoonsons to inflate to keep uh, the walls solid here like you do on a skin and frame boat so it's pretty good you don't need to treat the aluminum tubing because there is no aluminum tubing on this boat if you go into salt water you've got to treat your tubing so they don't seize up now that's you know that's part for the course when you own a kayak you sign on to maintenance of that kayak uh, kayaks require maintenance and uh, they need to be cared for this one requires pitifully little maintenance <laughs> it's just like, i'm not trying to think of how you'd maintain this kayak there's not much to it it's only got a few parts uh it was pretty clear to me that even if you open the wine before you uh, assemble this kayak you could probably get it together because it's very simple it just goes together almost intuitively and uh that's pretty nice I have other Oru kayaks they take a little bit more effort to assemble them and you know they have their place they provide different types of performance this boat fun boat gets you out on the water quick get you off the water back in the car quick get you home intact it's a great boat I love my kayaks I mean when I'm out in the water I just feel great you know kayaks they're like a shirt you know you, you put a kayak on you don't get in a kayak uh, other boats you get into you know a rowboat maybe a canoe you know you're sitting up higher you're not sitting on the floor it's not as you know canoes are pretty good though I like canoes I like all boats but I have a special fondness for kayaks so you put a kayak on and it's like putting on a pair of pants or a shirt and oh the green heron <laughs> okay green heron flyby all right well you put on your boat and you go on the water and you know it re a good kayak responds to every move you make in a, in a positive way and uh, when you know how that boat handles particularly in longer kayaks uh, when you know how those boats handle you can make a little big long kayak handle like a little short boat if you get the right fit and it's set up for you and it's ready to go uh, you can have a lot of fun uh, a dead boat is not fun to uh, I can see I'm gonna have a lot of fun look at the fit and finish on this all the edges are covered there are there are screws that hold this together uh, there's no like unfinished parts on this boat it's uh, it's fairly good boy did I get eaten alive when I was out camping uh, this past weekend shoulder strap sternum strap it's uh, quite a transportable package 
and it only weighs 20 pounds. Here's the uh, the bag with the pack, the straps stowed. The uh, the shoulder straps go in here. The waist belt it stows in there. I really love design details, and uh, I don't want to let these go unnoticed. Um, a lot of times uh, you have a strap like this, uh, which has extra. It has extra nylon, right? You know, it's uh, it's longer, so you can, for adjustment purposes. And uh, what they did, they took the time to sew on Velcro. Now, I appreciate this because I do this on a lot of my gear at home, uh, my backpacks and things. I have a strap. I need it. It's almost always used when it's uh, rolled up and it, uh, it has tons of slack. And I like that to be nice and neat. So what you can do, you roll this up, you put the Velcro under here and over here, and it holds this uh, tight. You know, I mean, they, they had in mind that this was gonna fly on a, you know, on an air, airline conveyor belt. Well, I'm hoping I don't lose the, ca uh, the uh, camera into the drink. I forgot the camera leash. So let's try a little, uh, 60 here and the ultimate danger uh, the up position It's highly maneuverable in a good way and uh, it leans really well there's a lot of resistance right here a lot of resistance so uh, very very stable uh, yet you can still lean it lean it over do a pivot where you're going pretty good paddle straight uh, it's very lightweight uh, you know it's got that uh, hard shell you know that's the one thing about Uru that I like they deliver a hard shell performance in a folding kayak one of the best things about this kayak is what it does best and that is go and it uh, it's able to maintain pretty good speed I don't have my GPS with me. I can't give you an accurate speed reading, but uh, it is pretty fast. Uh, you know, most kayaks, they go good and they just reach a certain speed and they, they won't go any faster unless you really kill yourself. Um, so what I like is a uh, cruising speed, is how I really judge a kayak. And uh, well, I can get out by these stumps. And uh, you can get an idea, maybe, if you can see it in here, of the uh, how fast I'm passing this stuff by. I tell you, maneuvering is just great here. So I keep the seat back uh, very vertical. It keeps me in a, you know, a seated upright position when I'm paddling. And uh, now I'm among the tree stumps. And uh, I hope this camera is showing them at water level. I'm gonna go out a little further. I gotta come here at night sometime. This is just great. Kayaking at night, kayaking at night is a blast. You know, under the sky, under the full stars. We got the comet up there right now. Neotech is up there. Uh, it's a great way to spend your day. So a couple of words, you know, while I'm out here uh, about safety. Um, number one, always have a life jacket. I mean, that's a no-brainer. And there's a couple of different types of life jackets. This is, you know, uh, you know, regular old kayaking life jacket. Um, where this jacket falls short is um, it. Um, this jacket won't roll you over. If I'm if I flip over and hit my head on a rock and I'm knocked unconscious, this jacket won't roll me over. So I float face up. Uh, if you remember the ones you've seen, like in the Titanic, they have two large flotation areas up here. Uh, those are called May West. That's a nickname, May West jackets. And uh, there is a similarity, but uh, they, uh, they'll they roll you over and they'll keep you floating face up. Now, 
that could be good in cold water. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a couple of different types of life jackets to choose from. Great selections available. Life jackets for kayak. This is more of a canoe life jacket. Life jackets for kayaks are usually shorter. Uh, so when you have a spray skirt on, that they get above the spray skirt, you can have the spray skirt below it. That's typical for a kayak, and there's a lot of straps and things for adjusting them and raising them up and down. Uh, they'll have more pockets, uh, you know, so you can find the right life jacket for yourself. That's a, that's a must have, you know, <laughs> you're required to have one by law in this state. I think the Coast Guard requires a life jacket for every uh, occupant of a boat. If I had a dog on here, they'd have a life jacket too. Now, after your life jacket, your number one consideration, and I might even put it before a life jacket, is water temperature. This water is just bath water. It's beautiful. Uh, you get out into cold water and you could be in serious trouble in a few minutes. I see people who purchase kayaks in the fall, in the winter. More the winter, the water stays warm a little while into the fall. But in the winter, you know, January, February, March, these people buy these kayaks or they get them delivered like this one and uh, they take them right out on a reservoir. You know, there's ice around the edges, the water's like 33 degrees, and uh, they're out there paddling around with their new kayak, you know, in perfect safety, they think. Well, bad news, if that boat flips over, within a few minutes, they won't be able to move their arms because of the hypothermia of the cold water, the shock, everything. Um, strong kayakers, strong swimmers, have drowned plenty of times because they didn't uh, use caution in, uh, in cold water. Now, for most of people, caution could mean not going on the water. If you absolutely have to go on the water in cold weather, my recommendation would be to go no more than chest deep and stay close to shore. If you fall out, be able to walk out of the water and uh, hopefully you'll have a way to keep warm once you're out of the water because you could be in big trouble. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to make more of this than, uh, than it is. You know, the kayaking is just a safe, wonderful sport, but uh, you need to uh, just exercise a little bit of caution and you'll be fine. You know, you'll, you'll have a great time. This is about 15 minutes from my home, and that's another huge point for this kayak. Uh, you throw this in the car, and when you see water, you, uh, you just set up. It's less than five minutes to set this up. It's just amazing. You have your life jacket, your paddle, maybe some drinking water, and you're all set. You know, for an RV owner like me, you know, small uh, RV, this is really uh, just a great addition. Uh, You know, by itself, pretty portable. Uh, even lighter weight than without the bag. I, you know, I, I would want the bag on a boat like this. Uh, I just want it to uh, keep it in good condition. It's natural to get scratches in them. It's, uh, it's normal to get, you know, dings and things in them. Uh, that doesn't mean you shouldn't take care of it. People say to me, well, you know, does that kayak get scratches in it? No, not if you leave it home. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, let's be real. Uh, nothing bad. I've had my Coast Kayak, Oru Coast Kayak, for a couple of years, and uh, I've used it quite a bit in all kinds of conditions. Three, four years. I don't know. I got them when they first came out as a kickstart thing. And that boat, it has a couple of little scratches on the bottom. That's just the way it is, you know. If you want to keep it new, keep it in your closet. Uh, there's two straps over here, two two uh, buckles that holds this box together. You just open this up, and the box opens. What they did over here was they labeled these, uh, where the parts go. There's only a few parts to this kayak, which is a real blessing. Uh, you know, the, the uh, seat back goes here, there's a, uh, a storage pocket here, seat bottom goes there, and both sides are labeled, right? Here's a storage, storage pocket, uh, front bulkheads. So, you know, when you put this together, you know where everything goes when you, when you box it up. 
pretty much the boat. It's pretty lightweight, I'll tell you that. Wow. It's uh, very good. The business end of a kayak is underneath it. You want the bottom. I'm a real, I love bottoms. And, uh, you know, has a uh, bumper here for, you know, for when you transport this, it'll protect it a little bit. And uh, so there's a flat section right here. And there's a little bit of an angle over here. So you imagine this boat floating in the water. When you lean, there's a big panel here. And that is really going to push back against you when you lean. Okay, it's going to, uh, that's a, I consider all this primary stability. I mean, primary stability is really here, and this might be secondary and tertiary, I don't know. But uh, I consider this, uh, the, the, you know, this whole thing, primary stability. This thing is very wide, and you could probably, I'm, I'm going to bet my, uh, uh, I'll bet you a glass of apple cider that I brewed, that this is uh, very stable in the water. Uh, extremely stable. And that's an asset in flat water. It's a liability in really rough water. But this is not a rough water boat. This is a flat water boat. You want to get out and have some fun at your waterways. This is just a great boat for that. And, uh, you know, I took my time assembling this. But uh, you could assemble this very quickly. So, yeah. So I can feel, even on ground, I can feel. Now, my guess is when I lean this boat over really far, then I'm going to have more resistance right here. Uh, you can see that panel. And uh, all that means is the boat's going to be sable. If you're worried about a kayak, you know, a real tippy kayak, right? They have a reputation for being tippy. This is not one of them. Boy, that's maneuverable. Paddle, I'm um, using the Oru uh, holding paddle, collapsible paddle, and this is a touring paddle. It's meant for touring. It's a little uh, touring paddle, you know, to me, touring paddle is a little longer, a little thinner, and it's meant for repetitive cycles, lots of them, you know, paddling. It doesn't give you a huge amount of resistance. You know, some, uh, some kayak paddles are big and, you know, massive and when you dig in and paddle you get a lot of bite in the water now I've got a paddle like that and I use it sometimes on a lake like this if I want a good workout and I'm coming up here to go fast and I'm coming up here to uh, really exercise my arms now this setup is uh, a little different this setup is uh, it's more for smaller bites of water but lots of them and it's a lot less fatiguing uh, when you're out paddling for a long period. So the paddles are good. It's good to know, you know, get a paddle that you need. You know, they're a general purpose paddles. Uh, this one will do almost everything. <laughs> and it's a good compromise of weight and, uh, and cost. You know, it's not an expensive paddle. You can spend as much money as you want on a kayak paddle. You can get a uh, carbon graphite. Yeah, Oru makes a nice carbon graphite paddle. <laughs> they haven't sent me one yet, though. Uh, they make a beautiful paddle. Uh, you know, the idea behind an expensive, lightweight paddle, and you gotta be careful with them, they can be fragile, is uh, would you rather lift uh, 50 pounds once or five pounds 10 times? You know, lighter paddle, when you're out paddling all day, you're moving that weight a lot less. It's like a heavy pair of hiking boots or a heavy pair of bicycle shoes. You know, you have extra energy just to move the paddle. Not as much energy is going into the water. But this one's pretty good. I could use this all, I've used this all day long. I used it on a Delaware recently, uh, three days, and uh, the paddle just worked great. It's strong enough for me. The ends are a little chewed up. I do have to push off of rocks and things sometimes, and uh, this paddle can handle that uh, reasonably well. That doesn't mean that everybody can do that, because some people are just, not, <laughs> just don't have the touch, you know? They can break anything. But uh, if you're a reasonable paddler, it's a reasonable paddle. I've been paddling with this Oru adjustable paddle at its uh, shortest setting, and now I'm gonna just contrast that by opening it up and 
extending it all the way here. And there's markings on here that show you when it's uh, set up the right way. Yeah, it has a different feel. A little more resistance and a little more push to the sides, but it's not a problem. It's going pretty good. So for this boat, I like the, uh, the paddles. Extended about halfway. I tried them full out and I tried them all the way, you know, full in. And uh, seems to be pretty good halfway. Clears the side of the boat. I got a good angle for push and pull. And, uh, you know, I'm not doing the best technique. I should be paddling with my torso. It would give me much more power. But I'm just out here relaxing so I couldn't care less. 